Hey everyone, welcome to this quick video on using custom roles in Azure Resource Manager. But first, as always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this a like, subscribe, comment, and share. Now, I want to really focus on the idea of least privilege. That's a key principle when we think about any kind of security, giving just enough permission to get the job done, and ideally just in time, only when it's actually needed. Now, Azure has a huge number of roles built in. Some of them are generic and apply to everything like owner, contributor, reader. Others are specific to certain types of resource. And ideally, I want to use those built-in roles. I don't really want to create custom roles. But there are going to be times where maybe those roles are too high-powered, or they don't give me the exact combination I need to focus on that least privilege principle. And so we can create our own roles. Now, if we think about Azure, Azure is really built from resource providers. So we have the idea of multiple resource providers. For example, Microsoft.Compute is a resource provider. There's Microsoft.Network, Storage, SQL, all of these different resource providers. And within resource providers, they define certain types of resource. So again, if this was Microsoft.Compute, this could be virtual machine or virtual machine scale set or availability set or a disk. Now, for that resource, there are various types of actions that apply to that resource. Now, there are some that are generic, things like read, um, write, delete. They work across anything. Then there are others, and others are specific to that type of resource. Like if it's a virtual machine, I can run certain uh, types of actions. I can stop it. I can restart it. And then, of course, there are, there are lots of resources defined in there. So that's the kind of makeup. So we have resource providers that define resources. And then for those resources, there are various actions that apply. And when we think about what is a role, well, we have a certain role. We call it role one. And we pick the actions that we want for that role. So maybe for this role, I'm picking a certain action from that resource provider, and maybe another action from that resource provider to define what is that role. Now, once we have the role, what do we, what do, we do with it? So if we think about, we have Azure AD Tenant, and within there, ideally we have groups. Now, yes, I can assign roles directly to security principles, like a service principle for an app, a managed identity, a user. We try and assign it to groups just because it's easier to manage. I'm not worrying about, did I forget to revoke that role from something when it changes role? Add and remove them from the group, and that group is used for file permissions, SharePoint permissions, and role assignment. And those groups, remember, could be synced from Active Directory. It could be assigned. I'm putting people specifically in it. It can even be dynamic, where I have a query that defines that group membership. So ideally, I have some, let's say, group one. And what I would do is I would assign that role to a certain group at a certain scope. So remember, I may have kind of, well, I have a subscription. Within that subscription, I have multiple resource groups. And again, we think least privilege. So I think the role that just encompasses what they need to do at the scope that contains the objects they need to do those actions on. So maybe it's just things in a certain resource group. So I would assign the role to that group at that scope. So that's kind of how we think about that. I create the role with the actions I need. I assign it to ideally a group at the smallest scope possible that actually encompasses what they need to do. So let's actually take a quick look at this. So here I'm in the Azure portal. 
And if I just went ahead and looked at, for example, a subscription, if I go to my access control, I can see there's a huge number of roles. Because essentially at this point, a subscription or resource group can contain really anything. So every single built-in role is going to show there. Now to contrast that, if I went and looked at a storage account and did the same thing and looked at all of the roles, well, we'll see there's a lot less because it's only going to show me roles that actually use the storage account resource with the Microsoft.Storage resource provider in some way. Now I can absolutely go and look at these and it helps kind of show the idea. If I looked at um, storage account contributor, for example, I can look at the permissions. I can see all of the resource providers that it has some permission, some actions from. If I looked at Microsoft Storage, well here I can see the different types of kind of resources, so storage account. I can see there's things like read, write, delete on kind of child type resources. And there's also these other actions where I can see things like, hey, um, regenerate storage account keys, restore blob ranges, um, create a shared access token. So I can see all those different capabilities just by looking at a certain role. So it's made up of the actions for a resource that's defined in the resource provider. Now, if I want to create my own, I could do it at kind of creating a subscription. I could do it in a resource group. And I would go to my access control. I would now say add custom role. I would give it a name, I'll just say test one. Now notice I can start from scratch. I could import JSON. It's actually going to show me the JSON later on. Or I could clone an existing role. So maybe there's a role that's pretty close to what I want to do. It's just maybe missing a few things or it's got a few too many things. And then when I click next, well, this one only has one. I could go and delete the things. Let's just pick a different one. That's not a great example. Let's pick one with a bit more power. Let's go and look at virtual machine uh, contributor, sure. So now I'm going to look at permissions. It was all of these permissions. So if these don't apply to my new role, I could go and delete certain things. Maybe I don't want them to be able to work on scale sets. Maybe I want to give them something else. So here I could go and search for the resource provider. So maybe it's Microsoft.Compute. There I can see it. And then I'll be able to see all of the actions that are defined in Microsoft.Compute by the different types of resource. And I could add and remove them to it. Let's pick something random. Then I can pick the assignable scopes. So this can be subscriptions or resource groups. In preview, also management groups. There is a limit of 5,000 custom roles per Azure AD. And to create a custom role, I have to have the Microsoft authorization role definitions right action on the scope. For example, owner uh, would have that permission. So I can go and add different scopes that will be able to use this role. It will then show me the JSON. I can see all of those permissions. Then I would go ahead and actually create it. If I actually jump out for a second, if I go back to just looking at roles, you'll see all of them have these kind of blue boxes on them. This little blue box, that's a built-in role. If I actually scroll down, we can see some with orange boxes. So these are custom roles. So this is one I created. I created this role because what I required was something that could find any virtual machine. So I had to be able to do read access on the object. Then I had to be able to use the run command extension. That's all I needed. So if we look at my custom role, you'll see all I have is for virtual machines. I have read. And then I have an other, and my other is run command on virtual machine. That's all this has. And what I basically did with this is my process was I actually had an Azure function. So that Azure function had a managed identity. So that lives in Azure AD for that function. 
I gave this, that constrained role, at actually a very high management group level. So I assigned this identity, that role, and the scope was kind of the root management group. And that let it see any VM in my entire tenant. It used Azure Resource Graph to find the VM based on the guest OS name. And then what it would be able to do is I could send it by a RESTful API, I'd say I want to run this command inside it, I add or remove users from a group. So we could use the run command extension, which is super powerful. So I obviously locked it down to just that identity. But that's the idea of kind of how I can use these things. So create the custom roles, make it do just what you need it to do. Now I showed you this in the portal. I can absolutely do this in code as well. So this is a file from my Azure Masterclass. This is in the governance module. So if you actually download the repo, if you go over and I think it's in the folder, yeah, part three governance, I have this AZ roles file. And so from that, I kind of show how you can dump out all the actions, for example, for virtual machines. So here we can see all of the virtual machines actions and there they all are. I talk about how you can actually go ahead and look at roles, what that role, for example, can do. So this is showing virtual machine contributor. Then I talk about finding all the roles that have certain types of actions. Then I talk about creating a new role by basically taking an existing role and then modifying it and then creating a new role based on a new scope. I also show create, taking an existing role, dumping it out to JSON, modify the JSON, and then import it back in. So there are many ways to actually use these sort of roles. Ideally, I want to use code so I can check it in, I can change control. But really the key message is custom roles are super useful. So I can really focus on that idea of kind of least privilege. I don't want to use a role with more permissions than I need. So if I, if I can't find one that's built in that meets my requirements, create a custom role with just the actions you need. And then I'll think about assigning that role to the security principle, normally a group, but again, you saw in my example, it was a managed identity because it was a function at just the scope you need. So least privilege kind of all the time. I hope this was useful. Um, until next time, take care.